It all began in 94, delivered big in 98, took the fighting world by storm in 2010, went 3D in 2016, and it's making a huge comeback in 2022. The King of Fighters 15 is almost here and it's releasing on PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox Series X and S, and on PC with Windows Store, Steam, and Epic Game Store, marking the first time a King of Fighters game is releasing on both console and PC simultaneously. So let us find out if this latest entry in the long-running series is worth the wait. But before we do that, a gentle reminder to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I drop a new video. Officially announced during EVO 2019, the King of Fighters 15 is releasing next week, and you will be glad that SNK took the time it did to release a polished product. KOF 15 is, as its name implies, the 15th main entry of the King of Fighters franchise that started in 1994 with KOF 94. Since then, the 3 vs 3 fighting game series have gathered a large number of fans and followers, and even stemmed a number of titles and spin-offs. The previous game of the series was the niche yet still wildly praised King of Fighters 14. When KOF 14 was released, however, it was almost unanimously panned for its graphics. The game was SNK's first foray in 3D graphics and it did show with outdated looking models and bland colors. King of Fighters 14, despite its amazing gameplay and massive roster, was the subject of many jokes comparing it to a PlayStation 2 era fighters. Now, SNK definitely took that to heart when making the King of Fighters 15, as the game is stunning to look at. Using the true and tested and real Engine 4, King of Fighters 15 characters look colorful, beautiful, and absolutely alive. The game's art style mimics SNK's early games, where the characters are a blend of anime and painting style, reminiscent of Shinkiro's drawings back in the day. The game managed to come out even better looking than SNK's previous fighting game, Samurai Showdown. The characters are not the only thing that thrive on Unreal Engine though, as the lively stages and the effects look better than ever. If you have played the previous two open betas, then you have an idea on how beautiful the game looks as online videos do not do it justice. Surprisingly, SNK was able to polish character models and effects even more since the beta release. KOF 15 offers a respectable roster of 39 characters on launch, with 12 more coming as paid DLC in the first year. While definitely less than the massive KOF 14 selection of characters, it is still a big fighting game roster when you compare it to other modern fighters at launch. The selection of characters is a combination of old and newcomers, including the return of many fighters that we have not seen for years, like Ash Crimson, Yashiro, Chris, Shermie, and others. A new King of Fighters game will not be the same without brand new characters, and that role is filled with newcomers Isla and Dolores, as well as the semi-new warrior Cronin, who happens to be SNK's way of bringing back K49 from the King of Fighters 2001, a character that was problematic back in the day due to how close it resembled an anime character. Gameplay-wise, King of Fighters 15 took everything that worked in 14 and made it better. Those who played 14 will feel right at home, but SNK managed to tweak things enough to cause a massive change in the game meta. Let's start with the main game mechanics first before we get into the subtle massive changes. KOF 15 is a 3 vs 3 game, with each player getting to choose 3 characters and the order in which they are used. Once the first character is defeated, the second takes his place. A match is won once all 3 fighters of the enemy are defeated. KOF 15 also has a super meter which fills when doing successful moves or getting hit. Each level in the super meter can then be spent either using a super move or using EX moves. These amplified special moves were exclusive to when a player activates the max mode in KOF 14, done by pressing HP and LK. Can now be done outside of max mode similar to the King of Fighters 13. This change has massive repercussion on how meter is used, and also reduces the importance of the max mode. As back in King of Fighters 14, many players would rely on the same strategy, which has them go into a string of low kicks before cancelling into max mode and doing crazy combos. Speaking of max mode and similar to 14, there are two ways on activating this time buff. 
By pressing LK and HP you get into max mode which turns your max meter into a timer. During max mode players can do EX moves without using their super meter and can also super cancel the level 1 super into a level 2 then into a climax. Max mode activation and like King of Fighters 14 also grants the player a damage buff. The second way to activate the max mode is inside a combo. This activation is called quick max mode and while the timer for it is a lot shorter, it allows players to extend combos. Both max mode and quick max mode require two super meters to activate. The new mechanic that is the highlight of the King of Fighters 15 is the Shatter Strike. Done by a quarter circle forward and HP plus HK, this defensive and offensive mechanic looks like a normal CD attack but with armor and a purple hue. When done on an airborne opponent, he or she will then fly to the wall and bounce off giving the attacker a juggle opportunity. The Shatter Strike uses 1 meter of super and gives you back half a meter if the attack is successful. It is too early to say how players will end up using this new mechanic, which makes me excited to see the countless tournaments already announced for the game. But one of the major changes in the game that was never advertised is the ability to easily grab an opponent after you get knocked down. These wake up grabs are so strong that they completely change the meta of the game from the King of Fighters 14. This was done in order to make defense easier, which is quite interesting and might be welcoming to new players. Attacking players will now have to think twice before knocking their enemy and running towards them hoping to hit them with a meaty on wake up. As far as game modes go, King of Fighters 15 offers a number of possibilities both online and offline. Starting with offline, players have access to versus mode, story mode, training and mission. Story mode allows players to experience this chapter's new story. Fans hoping for an extensive mode with many cutscenes like Netherrealm Studios Mortal Kombat 11 or even Capcom Street Fighter 5 will be disappointed. Story mode is pretty much an arcade mode with couple cutscenes and an ending. Similar to the King of Fighters 14 in Samurai Showdown before it. The endings are beautiful though and slightly animated images with text with one scene in each ending with voiceovers. It is worth noting though that the team endings in the King of Fighters 15 are the longest by far of any SNK game providing tons of details and cameos about the cast. In what seems like a first, some endings are complete in each other and most of them could actually be canon. Another new cool feature in the King of Fighters 15 is how every character has a nicely done intro when they start the match, where the announcer presents them giving away some story bits. The game is also full with story interactions between characters which is beautifully animated in 3D unlike the previous game where these interactions were done with text and couple images only. As much as I appreciate the story bits and details given the endings and interactions, I cannot help but feel somewhat disappointed that SNK has yet to embrace a cinematic story like many other fighters have done in this day and age. Especially that the King of Fighters has some of the best lore and stories in any fighting game. Here's hope SNK will add more story details and modes post launch. And if you want to learn more about the King of Fighters story, check my King of Fighters 15 story so far series while I recap in details the story of the entire franchise. Link is in the description below. Versus mode allows players to fight each other or against the CPU. However, SNK found a way to enhance the experience and makes this mode easy to use in local tournaments. As versus mode now comes with a tournament option. Once selected, you get to choose how many players are participating and you can enter their names. Then as the tournament organizer, you can set who plays against who, with the player name shown on the game screen on top of their character's life bar. It's a little extra that will do wonders for local tournaments. Training mode is an essential part of any fighting game and SNK definitely found a way to stand out against the competition. This was made by adding tons of little easy tweaks that make the whole experience superior. For example, you can now see whether the move you use is positive, negative or neutral, which is very useful information when labbing a character. You can also change a character from within the training mode without having to go to the select screen and wait for the game to load. Now granted this was tested on the PlayStation 5 and it definitely uses the SSD capabilities of the console as not only in training mode but also during normal play, the loading is incredibly fast. 
Mission mode is similar to its counterpart in the King of Fighters 14. Each character has 5 or 6 combos that you need to perform to clear that certain fighter. These combos are generally useful and can be seen as a base for players wanting to take their game to the next level. Difficulty wise, mission mode is on par with 14 and is far from the crazy hard and infuriating King of Fighters 13 mission mode. Now let's go to online. Online play. A game in this day and age will live or die by the quality of its online. And up until the online beta, many were worried about the quality of the netcode, judging from SNK's past two games, King of Fighters 14 and Samurai Showdown. Luckily, SNK put all those worries to rest with the second open beta, which included a tuned and amazingly playable GGPO netcode. During the beta, I was able to play against people in South America almost flawlessly, and I am located in Morocco, which is crazy. The King of Fighters 15 netcode is by far the best online experience I have had in any modern fighting game. This is obviously based on the open beta, as I was unable to test online with the full game since the game has yet to release and I wasn't able to find people online. Now that the netcode worries are out of the way, let's talk about online modes. King of Fighters 15 online offers both ranked and casual matches. Casual match mode has you take on players around the world in and ranked sets. You can set your team any online option so you do not waste time going to the select screen. You can however choose to do so and change your team every single match. But the big change here and nice surprise is the ranked mode. Up until now SNK games really lacked the drive for players to go in ranked mode. Every time a game launches, ranked mode will die after a few months as players prefer to match up when they can in casual matches. The netcode of those other games was definitely a factor. But so was the progression. SNK is aiming to change all that with a new progression system. Winning matches in ranked earns you victory stars. Once you obtain 5 stars, your rank will increase. Your rank can also increase if you enter a promotion match. Achieving the top rank increases your star limit and unlocks something called the star scrambles. These are intense battles with a number of stars at stake. There are also things like daily boosts and bonuses to incite people to go into rank mode on a daily basis. This is definitely an interesting take and one that SNK hopes will get players to compete for the top ranks. It is worth noting that both casual and ranked allow you to go into training mode while waiting for the servers to match you up with an opponent, something that was not available during the beta. Besides casual and ranked, King of Fighters 15 also offer room matches where you can either create a room or lobby or join one. This mode allows you to play in a winner stay mode while other players waiting for their turn can spectate. This mode while it's straight to the point is still inferior to the superb King of Fighters 14 lobby system. An online training mode is also available, where you can match up with a friend and train online. Replays for your matches can be reviewed and a leaderboard section is also available from the menu. Looking at the extensive online modes in the King of Fighters 15 really shows that SNK is really serious about the competitive side of the game. A King of Fighters game will not be complete without a gallery, and this one is divided into both a movie and a sound section. The movie side includes all the game's cutscenes and unlocked endings, as well as the anime intro by the world-renowned artist Masami Obari. After completing story mode with every single team, I still lack a large number of movies to unlock. These are the ones that you need a special team to be able to view them. And the games only gives you a hint, like one or two characters from each team, which will make the single player experience last longer for those of us who want to see all the endings and story bits. The sound section includes all the voices for all the characters within the game. <laughs> SNK games are known for their catchy music and outstanding themes, and the King of Fighters 15 is no exception. The game offers a wide variety of beautifully performed themes for each team. Speaking of music, SNK included a full mode dedicated to SNK's mastery of themes, dubbed the DJ Station. This great feature allows players to listen to the game soundtrack, as well as choose which theme to play on which stage. But that was not enough for SNK as they also included every single King of Fighters original soundtrack, from the King of Fighters 94 up to the King of Fighters 14, as well as Samurai Showdown and other SNK titles. Most of these albums will need to be unlocked though and will add a definite longevity to the game's single player aspect. 
After waiting for the game for years and spending the last few days extensively playing it, I can say without a doubt that the King of Fighters 15 is a complete package and an amazing game. While I do feel SNK missed an opportunity by not giving us a proper story mode like other fighting games, what we have here is plenty. This is the King of Fighters game we always wanted when 14 came out. With a robust gameplay, great roster and amazing online experience, KOF 15 is indeed the biggest KOF and one that has the true potential to be the best game of the series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video from Neo Geo Now. Now don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not done so, and I would like to take this opportunity and thank my patrons for supporting the channel and making this content possible. Making daily videos and especially the documentaries and lore episodes takes a very long time and a lot of effort, and being able to get some support for these time-consuming tasks allow me to keep going and strive for more and better content. With that said, I want to give a big special shout out to Michael, Brian Yard, Fahad Suwaidi, and Jack Paul. As well as special thanks to Shaka Asamia, Refugio Robles, Felipe Guimara, Jihao Ju, Muhammad Al Blushi, Anthony Longino, Burned Retinas, Lily Wong Esmeralda, and Goran. Those of you who are not yet Neo Geo Now patrons, I hope you will check my Patreon page where you can become patrons, helping the channel produce more videos as well as receive special perks that are exclusive to patrons, like early access to videos, exclusive making offs, and other SNK digital goodies. Link for the Neo Geo Patreon page is in the description below. So until next time, thank you for watching.